As we continue in module three of NCCR core, we're going to be talking about starting out with saws. And so hand saws are not used very often because there's so many other types of powered saws now that are just way faster and easier on your body. But there's different circumstances when a hand saw is still necessary. And so there's different kinds. And so I'll show you a back saw first. So a back saw. is designed, it cuts on the back motion. And so you're pulling it back and um, it's cutting then. And so when you're gonna be using a back saw, these are square shaped and flat, and these will be used with an old miter box. And so if you see, it has grooves built into it. And so what this is designed to do is you would slide your board in and then your saw fits in that groove and then you can cut your board and you're gonna get a perfectly straight line. So that's really when you're using one of these, a back saw. And so you can also use this to cut a miter cut if you like as well. There's different angles you can do to put inside. So this is the old way you would cut their trim with would be with a back saw and a miter box. So you also then have, let's say you're framing and you're going to be cutting um, your framing material, right? So you have two different kinds of hand saws. I can't imagine cutting a whole house only using hand saws. I'd be jacked if that were the case. But so things to know is which direction you're cutting your wood. And so wood has grain, meaning when you cut a tree and you see all those rings, right? When they cut that in, it's creating grain patterns. Different woods have different grains, but you have the end of the board is the end grain. And so as you're cutting through all of those rings, basically you're cutting against the rings or edge grain or the long ways you're cutting with the rings. And so it depends what you're using. It's a whole lot easier to cut with the grain because the wood naturally kind of wants to separate. That's why you can split wood with an act and it pops apart because it splits along the grain pattern because you're going with the grain. And when you're doing that, you can use a rip saw because it'll cut a whole lot easier. And with that, you can do a whole lot faster because you want to be moving a lot of material at once. And so I don't know if you can see if I zoom in, but this has really big, aggressive teeth. There's less teeth on it, and this is designed to go with the grain. A rip saw, again, is more aggressive, so your rip saw is five to nine teeth per inch. So that means in one inch, from here to here is about an inch. There's one, two, three, four, five. You can see where my fingers are, this is a rip saw view that has that. It'll probably say it somewhere on your saws if you're looking at them. A cross-cut saw, has finer teeth because you're going against the grain and so you have a lot more layers of the wood to cut through and a really big aggressive tooth is gonna get stuck on it and it's not gonna cut real smooth, whereas these are gonna cut through it. It takes a little longer, it's not as aggressive, but you cut through it smoother. So you're gonna use the smaller teeth, which is the eight to 14 teeth per inch on when you're going against the grain or across the board. And so you can think of it, are you cutting the length of the board? That's a rip saw, you're ripping the length down to a smaller size, or you're going across the board, the short ways, you're gonna use a crosscut saw with less teeth. And then we also have a hacksaw, which you see in the bottom right corner in the picture. So a hacksaw has really, really fine teeth, and this is designed to cut through plastic and metal. And so a hacksaw is what a plumbers do, because all plumbers are hacks. I'm just kidding, that's not true. But hacksaws, um, you're hacking through the material and you're cutting through metal. And so that's when, um, for the most part, when you're using a hack. So, I mean, if you go to a Christmas tree farm, they're going to put a wood blade on one of these, and that's what they'll use to cut through that as well. But the main people you see with one of these are plumbers. And so they still use them today because it's pretty easy to cut through PVC with one of these. It's pretty quick, and it's nice. it makes a nice clean cut. I don't have the coping saw with me right now, but a coping saw um, is designed to cut intricate curved curving in um, trim or different things. And so um, you'd use it to coat materials, hence the word coping saw, but it just has a really thin blade and then this giant C shape is what holds it together. And so you can see here, these ones are just a keyhole saw and a drywall saw, basically designed to cut through the holes in plaster. Um, and what makes them unique is they have a sharp point where you can poke through the material so you don't have to drill a hole or anything, you can just ram that through the drywall and then use it to cut. Something to notice or pay attention to is the kerf 
of a blade. A kerf is the thickness of the blade. And so think about when you're cutting through material, however wide your blade is, however wide those teeth, that's what you're cutting out. And so the kerf is the groove left in a board when you cut. And so you want to make sure you're on the waist side of the board when you're cutting because the kerf, you're going to lose that material. So a lot usually a blade is about an eighth inch thick. And so if your blade is an eighth inch thick, you're losing that eighth. And so on some things, it doesn't matter that much, but even framing, you want to be with, within the 16th, right? And so you don't want to lose that eighth of an inch because your board will be short. And so you want to make sure you put the kerf or thickness of the blade on the waist side of your line. You draw your pencil line. Here we go. Process of cutting. So a file. Mm -hmm used to, it's kind of like really hard sandpaper, but it's used to shape uh, metal or even wood, there can be wood files. And so there's different kinds. And so if you can see, I don't know if I can get this to zoom in, this one has a curved edge on this side and then flat on this side. Whereas the big one here is flat on both sides. And so there's different grits on either side or different aggressiveness. And so the part here, this is called your tang. This goes into a handle, or you don't need to put it in a handle, but if you want to, all kinds of different sizes and shapes. Um, but just know that's what a file does, is just to sand down or take away material for whatever, um, whatever you're doing. It's not really designed to cut, it's designed to shape and shave away. So say you cut something and it has a rough edge on the metal, like you take a grinder and it has that sharp edge and just not kind of jagged, you're going to take the file in and smooth that out, and make it nice. So there's different types here, different types of files, um, different, uh, right here you see it, a bastard file is straight lines, there's double lines here, smooth, dead smooth, there's just different, bunch of different kinds. Um, and so showing that, all right, so a rasp is kind of like a file except Think of a cheese grater. When you think of how a cheese grater works, it has like all those little holes, a lot more aggressive teeth. That's kind of what a rasp is. It has bigger, more aggressive teeth. And so this is going to take away the material faster and just be more aggressive. And so a rasp has um, sharper teeth. Not good with metal. So here's your different files. All right, utility knives, these are super handy. Uh, most carpenters, they don't carry a normal pocket knife, they're gonna carry a utility knife. And why is that? You never have to resharpen it because they have a blade that's cheap and inexpensive to replace. They're designed to be super, super sharp when they're new, but they dull, but it's easy to replace them. And they always have two sides. So it's super convenient. And again, this is what I always carry because who's got the time to sharpen a regular pocket knife? And so if you always have one of these, you're good to go. You keep an extra set of blades in your truck, they come in a big pack of 50 and then just keep going until it gets dull and replace it when you go. So this is a normal working man's knife. Some people call them box cutters. I call it utility knife. Um, and again, I, I would rather carry one of these than a normal pocket knife. Right here, the self-retracting. That is the safest. That means if you don't put pressure on it with your thumb to push the blade out, it's going to go back in by itself. And that's just the safest way to protect yourself from getting accidentally cut because sometimes you leave the tip out on these kind. If on a normal knife, you slide the tip out and you forget you to put it back in and you put it in your pocket, you can stab yourself. Um, so it's just safer to use a self-retracting blade, meaning it automatically is gonna bring itself back in. I like the folding ones. Uh, personally, Milwaukee makes a really nice one. Shovels, earth removing tool, is that they call it. Um, things to know are just a spade comes to a point. Round is, um, is not as pointed as a U shape. And so this is nice for trenches where you're digging a nice, um, it's just a U shape. And then square, square is made to move material around to scrape it off the floor. But you're not gonna dig a hole with a square shovel because it's not gonna penetrate the soil very well. It's gonna be really hard. So a square shovel is designed to scoop things and move sand or gravel that's already loose. And then a spade is designed to break the earth apart and dig into it. So a spade has a nice sharp point. And so the handles, they're wooden or fiberglass usually, um, because if it were a metal handle, it would just be way too heavy. And so the, they just want you to know what are, fiberglass is the way to go. I think I have an aluminum one, which is pretty nice as well. 
and then there's different kinds of picks. And so a pick is what you're going to use if you think of old Snow White movie, that's what they use in the mines, right? To break apart the rocks. Kind of that's what you're using to break rocks or just move them out of the way or break up really hard soil. We live with really, um, with clay soil. And so if it's really dry, it basically becomes like a rock. Your shovel, even if you're weigh 300 pounds, you jump on that shovel, it doesn't go into the soil because it feels like a rock. And so you use a pick to break it and loosen it up and then you can take your shovel and dig it apart. And so a pick has two pointed ends and then this once you know a mattock has a pick on one end or a hoe on one end and then a ax head on the other. And so a mattock is used, um, he has as this accent is really nice, you can use it to cut apart um, tree roots and things that are in your way. Whereas a pick is more designed to pick out um, rocks that are in your way. But basically the same tool. And they have a wedge style, so these they'll actually, you can change the handle pretty easy. You take a hammer and you hit this down, and it'll actually just slide right off the end. But what happens is it gets fatter on this back part, so it won't allow it to slide off the back side. And so just make sure you get it nice and tight before you start swinging it, because you don't want to slide down and hit your fingers that way. A chain fall, so this is just a chain hoist, and so you're going to use this to pick up really heavy things. This is what we have on our garage door basically here to pick up our heavy garage doors. And so what's unique about them is that they have a gear system. And so it's a simple machine, pulleys and gears make it so you can pick up really heavy weight with little effort in machine shops or auto or mechanic shops. They're going to use these to pick up your engines, right? Because the engines are super heavy. So they'll use this and with just a little pull of a chain. They're picking that engine up a little effort something to know they have an automatic brake. They're designed that the weight will never fall down by itself. You have to engage the release yourself to lower it. Um, it doesn't just drop. You have to pull the chain in that direction or sometimes there's a release, but they have automatic brakes. A come along, see we have a picture. So a come along is designed, it has a cable and is designed to pull things horizontally only. These are not rated to go up and down. Um, that chain or that cable could easily snap these are designed to move things horizontally and think of it when you're asking your girlfriend or boyfriend out on a date and you want them to come along with you, you're going to hold their hand and pull them towards you. You aren't pulling them up in the air, you're pulling them along as you walk. So you're asking them to come along with you. And so remember that way you're pulling horizontally, whereas a hoist or a that other thing we talked about, that chain fall, those are designed to go vertically, right? They are rated to pick things straight up and down. So there's a difference between those two. All kinds of different clamps. Clamps are super useful. Um, like these ones are used a lot by metal workers to hold things while you are welding them together. It's gonna hold those metal things together. Whereas like pipe clamps and these ones are used by woodworkers um, to hold things together while you screw them, but also to hold them together while the glue dries. And so there's all kinds of different things that are just a third hand basically, or sometimes you glue with the 10 clamps because you need a bunch. So there's a bunch of extra hands to just hold everything really tight and hold them together. Um, a, let's go back to these. These are unique because they have really wide jaws. And so you, get, you guys have more surface area where you can clamp things, more pressure that way. And you tighten these by turning these at the same time. A C clamp is based off the shape. And so this is a trigger clamp. Um, and so it's just, you squeeze the trigger um, and it gets tight and then it's released. These ones lock or like a vice grip. Once they're locked in place, you have to hit this release lever to let it open. Spring clamps are a closed pin and they operate with a spring. Who would have thought? And then pipe clamps, these just slide onto a standard pipe and you can tighten these. These are awesome. You can get a lot of clamping pressure and they are not super expensive. Um, and you can get pipes that are really long. And so that's just their convenient because you can get, change the size based on the pipe that you have. So something a neat tip to remember is your clamp is since it's a little bit of like a pinpoint of pressure, especially with C clamps, they are, don't have very big surface area of clamping pressure. You want to put a spacer pad or block in between that and your finished surface because you don't want to put a big dent in your furniture, right? You want things to look nice. So just remember you can use, um, use some kind of pad or block between to prevent damage. All right. And that is wrapping up the PowerPoints for module three.